Yeah, it's just come down. Now it's coming. All right, guys, we're back up here at the Brooks Mine, Mayon Park, and we're well underway in the project. We're going to be four months into it now. So we started, we started out at the end of March, and now it's almost August. So we have Billy Best here, skin of September with us. And um, we might as well take a walk down the side, show everybody what they want to see. What do you think, Banks? Yeah, we'll give them an update of what's going on. There's been a lot of people wondering what's going on inside. We can't open it up to anybody yet other than this way, so we'll take a look. We got this ventilation fan set up. I flow 3700 CFM of air into the mine since it's, it's, uh, there's no second opening yet. So it's forcing the air into the mine, correct air, and then the, then the mine air is blowing back out the portal. also see we pulled some of the rail out that was originally inside we cut that up and brought it out so it was out of the way and we're going to be bringing in new rail here at some point. It looks a lot different than our first video which uh, I don't think we had any roof support in at that time right? No it was just so walking and walking in. Um, we're so close to the surface here, we did have some some loose top and just some little things hanging. It wasn't that bad, but we decided since the public's going to be coming in to make it as safe as we possibly can. So we hitched a lot of rails in here and uh, have a two inch plank up over the top, just supporting everything and holding it tight. Yeah. So we kind of did that because, you know, to get some proper roof support in the center, we'd have to build three piece sets here. And if we put a three piece set in, it would get so narrow right here, you'd really have to duck down under it and you forget about putting track or anything else in here because it'd be so small to support this. So um, Powell's Equipment actually uh, donated the use of an air compressor and a chipping hammer. So we chipped these niches in for the rail and we brought some 30 pound line rail in and um, well, supported the roof that way. Yeah. So thank you to Powell's Equipment and Scott Township. <laughs> Our timber coming in to the mine is that is a uh, standard Pennsylvania mine law, five foot spacing. All these props, it's all uh, white oak and red oak, came from R and R logging and uh, timber up in Mahoopany, Pennsylvania. And a pretty neat story with him. He actually uh, started, well, actually his uh, his family, his grandfather started their logging company by delivering mine props to a mine in Chicxinny. So it was pretty neat when we called him and. It, he was kind of a local guy from out by Tunganic and said, you know, we've got to get some mine props. And mine props? Well, that's how our, our company started. So <laughs> here we are doing it again. Yeah. Anyway, we're yeah. uh, at the first curve here in the drift. You can see we're pretty well back here with our timber set. We're pretty excited about the progress we've been making. As we came back in here, we were doing all single prop uh, up to this point, obviously. And here we need a little bit more roof support in the center. It just, um, 
wasn't quite what we what we wanted to be bringing the public in here and we had enough room that we were able to put our uh, three-piece sets in and we wanted to do that because for a couple of reasons one is just to show the public I realize we don't have any frame weights <laughs> that knows what they're looking at we don't have any rib weight here but uh, we want to be able to show the public what you know anthracite three-piece sem- three-piece set timber looks like as well so so we have what four Five sets. Five sets in here now. And uh, everything's cribbed off on the top and, and held tight. So, And it looks a little low walking through here, but they put, at some point, they put about two feet of fill in here. Uh, we have these props hitched down into the bottom rock, and we have to dig them down about two feet. So we're going to actually dig this thing down about a foot and a half yet, of, so there'll be that much more headroom. And then we're going to relay the rail on that. So that should get it back to you know the original floor again. Yes. One more layer off. One more layer off, and then we're good. Oh, no, I love it. Enough. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. It wasn't much. That would smell funny. Yeah. 
We're installing what's called sprags right now, and they go from collar to collar and from leg to leg. And normally, what they would be is if we were advancing this gangway, they'd be when you fire your face, you know, all the powder and everything's going to come, or the, the coal or the rock or whatever you're driving is going to try to hit your legs or your collars and your timber sets and blow them out. But they're also, in case if you're driving the trip through and the trip derails and hits one of the legs, it's supported with the uh, with all the other ones by spragging them all together. So me and Scott are just uh, putting them in now. So now we come to our first cross cut. If you remember from the first video, this is where we came to and we took the look to the right right here. Um, what we found is there was a little bit of a rib, I guess this pillar here that's left was trying to crack off the corner here. So we put the sets around that and timbered up um, some, I guess some kind of side relief there. Yeah. And then planked it all in. And then behind all this plank, we cribbed it all tight and just threw dirt and debris back there to hold it all nice and tight. Actually, on both on both sides here. This side isn't wasn't nearly as bad as this one, so that's only got a couple planks there. And it, it might never move, but you know when you start to see a crack forming in the side of the pillar, you, you got to make sure everything's caught. You can't let it get ahead of you. So. That's why everything's, these props are hitched down into the bottom really well. Everything's spragged together really well. These are the sprags that help hold the timber sets together, make everything strong. And then the liner boards and everything's cribbed tight against that, that pillar behind the liner boards, like Chris said. So nothing can move. It's stuck. It's stationary. That's what you need. It's what you want. Just like everything above us here, all these planks are jammed in tight with the roof just to hold like the blutzes and stuff so that nothing can move. And that's just the, the way to do it. It's the safest way to do it. If you can't move and build momentum, it can't fall. So mm -hmm. our first two props set up in here. <clears throat> and then uh, we got some debris back in there we're gonna have to pull out of there. But we're gonna do that once we get a buggy in here that we can fill it up with because it's a lot to haul outside in a wheelbarrow. And we're going to put two more props five more feet past them and we're going to build a little special something up in there that would be a fun little surprise for everybody so that's in the first uh the first entry right here moving forward out of our three-piece sets we come to the familiar mine car remember that from the first video when we found this thing this is going to end up getting pulled outside the it, it's been in here i believe they brought this in in uh, 1952 or 53 when moffett Retimbered the mine and brought the mine cars and put the better electric lights and the mannequins and all that in here. I believe that's when the mine car came in. So this thing has been in here for what, 80, almost 70, 80 years now. So some of the steels are pretty rough shape. The wood obviously had to be, is going to have to be replaced. So we'll have to evaluate whether the car can be rebuilt or if it's too far rusted away. But uh, the bearings still do move. We rolled the car a little bit right here, so it won't be too bad to yank it out of here once we get the new road laid. And then we'll get this out of here and then lay all the new track back, back to the face up there. So we started right up this way. And yeah. obviously some more debris piled up here. I'll have to go outside. Everybody that walks by, there's, there's a lot of people and a lot of support from the public. And everybody that walks by, they're always asking, you know, from when they were in here, when they were young, uh, most of the people, they say, whatever happened to the mannequins? Are they still in there? Right. <laughs> it happens all the time. And if you want to see the mannequins, you got to go across the valley over to the Lackawanna coal mine tour and go say hi to your old friends over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in uh, 1980 or early 80s, when they opened the Lackawanna mine tour, they took the electric mine locomotive that was sitting outside with the mine cars and the mannequins that were in here and they put them in the mine tour over there. So that's where they went. <laughs> Coming back a little farther here, this is about as far as we've made it so far. On the back side of the mine car there, we got a couple props here yet, and 
Now we ran out of timber. The ones outside are just a little bit too short. It's getting pretty high back here. So we're gonna get another load of props here for next weekend. And we've been working on it every, pretty much every Saturday since since March. So we made made some pretty good progress, we think. And yeah. it's going pretty good. And yep. we have the, the public to thank for that because not one dime of taxpayer money has been spent. We haven't had grants, we haven't had anything. We haven't even had to throw our own money in at this project or, you know, the city money or anything. It's all been donations from the public that want to see this get open. Either just private individuals or, or businesses have uh, donated either with our little cash donation box we have outside that people walk by and throw five, 10, 20 bucks in there. We've had a couple um, fundraisers on Facebook mm -hmm. and, and it's been very successful. We've been, we've been pretty happy with what people have been uh, gener generously giving us. For the yeah, the support's been outstanding. And you just, you can see it every time we go out to cut another prop or to grab a tool or whatever, somebody's usually stopping by, oh my gosh, are you really reopening that mine? I can't wait, I can't wait. And in the donation box it goes. So thank you to everybody that does that because we're not where we need to be yet financially, but we are steadily making progress with what we have. So, I mean, we... <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's been, you know, a steady stream of donations, which is keeping up with buying, you know, buying the timber. The timber, we, you know, we, we buy, that's not donated. Um, so that's where everybody's money's going, is right back into the project. Yes, so we have... all of us are volunteering on the project and every single every single dime that we get has been going into either buying something for the for the uh, the mine itself or mm -hmm. or renting equipment so yep absolutely it's just one more thing so in what three weeks is the relaunch of undergroundminers.com so we gotta thank dan shirtliff for rebuilding the entire underground miners website august 18th that sucker's gonna launch and uh it's gonna be pretty impressive so enjoy. Absolutely. <laughs>